Hello and welcome to video 3 of the DHIS2 GIS Academy. In this video I'll be giving you a brief introduction to QGIS and how to import data. Firstly we'll go through setting up a QGIS project, saving it and defining a projection for our project and secondly I'll show you how to import raster and vector data and finally how to style the data. Firstly Open QGIS by clicking on your desktop shortcut, by searching for it in the window search bar, or for Mac users go to Finder and then on the sidebar click Applications and locate the QGIS 16 icon. When QGIS is loaded, you'll be met with a screen that looks like this. We'll start off by saving our project in an appropriate location on our computers. It is a good practice to save QGIS projects as you are going along. The steps to do this are to go to Project, Save As, and within an appropriate location on your computer, such as the DHIS2 underscore training folder I created earlier, save your project under appropriate name. I'll be calling my project DHIS2 QGIS Training and pressing Save. You've now saved your project. You're able to click the save button here to save your project at any moment as we're going along these exercises. Next, we need to set up our coordinate projection systems in our project. To do this, you can click on the projection box on the lower right hand side. And this opens up the project properties and the coordinate reference system for our project. I'll be using the WGS 1984 UTM Zone 29 coordinate reference system. This is because I want to be working within a coordinate reference system which uses meters. You should locate the appropriate UTM Zone reference system. You can find this online quickly and then you'll be able to apply it by pressing apply and OK. We're now ready to import the first of our required data sets. To do this, we'll go to Layer, Add Layer, and go to Add Raster Layer. We're now going to add the population data set we downloaded earlier for our countries. In my case, it was the Sierra Leone population data set. We'll click the dotted browse button here, and within our DH is2 underscore training folder, click on the raster data set, which will look something like this, SLE underscore PPP underscore 2020 unadjusted underscore constraint, and press open, then press add. As you can see, this has added the population data set to our map extent. The next step is to add in our GeoJSON files which were downloaded from the DHIS2 platform. So go to layer, add layer, and add vector layer. Here, we're going to press the browse button once again, and we're going to click on our DEMA facilities geojson, and whilst pressing the control button, also click the Kinema chiefdoms geojson file, and press open. We leave these as default, and press add. As you can see, we have now loaded all of our data sets into QGIS. Next, we're going to change symbology on our data sets. To do this, we're going to right click on our data sets, go to properties, and go to symbology. For our population data set, we're going to change the render type from single band grey to single band pseudo colour. We're now going to change the colour ramp and we can change it to any of these colours, whichever you see fit and can easily work with. I'm going to use Viridis. In our mode, I'm going to press equal interval and I'm going to change the classes to six. You can change 
your color ramps to any settings you would like. It just helps visualize the data and be able to see where the highest populations are and where the lowest populations are in your raster. I'm going to press classify and then finally press apply and OK. As you can see, if we zoom into our map, you can see the areas of high population in yellow and low population in blue. If you want to quickly see how many population, how, how many people live in an area, you can press the identify button. And if you click on a square or a pixel, you can see the identify results pop up here. In this case, the pixel I clicked on has 297 people. Next, we're going to go back and symbolize our vector data sets. To do this, double click on the data set, go to simple fill and press no brush and press apply. So we've just done this for our district's data set. We can now move on to our facilities data set. In the same action, double click and you get to your properties and symbology box. Here we're just going to simply change the symbology of our data so we represent health facilities in an appropriate way. I'm going to choose the Topo Hospital marker as this is a universal marker for centres providing healthcare. I'm going to press apply and OK. I'm now going to save and that's it. We're ready to move on.